Our opening hymn can be found in the Source and Summit Missal, hymn number 338, Once in Royal David's City. God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. Once in Good morning, everyone. I don't know if you, like me, I woke up this morning and I said, what day of the week is it? <laughs> Yesterday felt like Sunday, and I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be here this morning or not. So I'm glad the Lord moved that fog out of my brain. In the liturgical cycle, the Sunday after Christmas is always the Feast of the Holy Family a beautiful feast which reminds us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and that Jesus was part of a family, and it's in the family that we learn how to love, how to live as God dreams for us to live. Let us gather our prayers and hearts together on this beautiful feast as we pray for our families, and we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. It is in family life that we learn acceptance, obedience, loyalty, and love. It's in the family life where there's many struggles as we all try to understand what God's word is for us. As we gather in prayer today, let us ask forgiveness for the times when we have not been open to God's spirit in the life of our families and ask the Lord to heal us and to fill us with his wisdom that our lives might reflect the life of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Lord Jesus, you are Emmanuel, the promised one of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you come to us in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins. A house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, brothers and sisters. Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all this, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. 
and let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Boy, we sure take a big jump from Christmas yesterday and the child Jesus in the manger, and now Jesus is 12 years old today. Maybe I slept a little longer than I thought in bed this morning. Today, as we move quickly from the story of Christmas to Jesus at 12 years of age, we know that the Gospels do not say much about those early years of Jesus' life. 
So today's gospel from Luke gives us a, an unusual glimpse into his family life. St. Luke tells us that the Holy Family would go to the temple every year to celebrate the Feast of Passover. Their example tells us that what makes a family holy is the desire to be in right relationship with God and right relationship with one another. This relationship involves a constant conversion of heart for all the members of the family. There was once a senior judge of the courts who witnessed a marriage and then congratulated the bride and groom with an important piece of advice. He said, see that you never convert your family into a courtroom. Instead, let your family be a confessional. He went on to say, if the husband and the wife start arguing like attorneys in an attempt to justify their behavior, their family becomes a court of law and nobody wins. On the other hand, if the husband and wife, as in a confessional, are ready to admit their faults, try to correct them, the family becomes a heavenly family. We tend to cherish a pious notion of the holy family as a family without any problems, kind of walking on the clouds all the time. But Luke gives us again a beautiful insight. What panic Joseph and Mary must have had not being able to find Jesus for three days. Any parent miss their child? One of my brothers got left at a roadside park for a little while, but mom and dad came back for him. We all were happy to have a little more space in the station wagon. <laughs> what we see in this anxiety that Joseph and Mary had is that they were, they were in the human realm, the human perspective. They were worried about the safety of their son, and rightly so. He was their responsibility. But when they find him in the temple, Jesus offered response from the spiritual perspective. He said, I must be in my father's house. And so just as in any family, there's sometimes we're not on the same page, are we? Sometimes we're operating out of the human realm and sometimes we're seeking to operate out of the spiritual realm and those don't always match up. This interchange between the members of the Holy Family offers us several qualities that are important for a healthy family life. These are acceptance, obedience, loyalty, and love. A Holy Family is accepting of the frailty of its members and of behaviors that might not be what the family conceived as ideal or normal. Think of Joseph taking the pregnant Mary into his home despite the vicious gossip that must have been shared because of her situation. And then in today's reading, see how Joseph and Mary seem to accept that their son was motivated by something greater than what they could explain. And so they learn to ponder and to treasure these experiences in their hearts. A holy family is obedient and loyal. You know, the word obedience comes from a Latin word meaning to listen. That's what it means to be obedient, to listen. Mary and Joseph listened deeply for the voice of God in their lives. Luke tells us that after the confusion in the temple, Jesus himself was obedient to his parents, just as he was obedient to God the Father, even when that meant embracing the cross. With obedience comes the call to humility. And as a model of faith, Mary remained loyal to her son, as she stood with him at the foot of the cross. 
Sometimes when we're confronted with the cross, we want to fight back or run away. But Jesus and Mary teaches us to embrace whatever challenge is before us with an unconditional trust that God is always leading us to life. We may not understand that in the moment, but God's plan unfolds in time. A holy family is loving. The love and faithfulness of the holy family experienced from God enabled them to love and trust one another as they moved forward into an uncertain future. This love was reflected in their relationship with God the Father. As St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us, he says, to love is to will the good of the other and to act upon it. To will the good of the other and to act upon it. That's what love is all about, to get ourselves out of the way. In his dying moments, Jesus expressed his concern and love for his mother by entrusting her to the faithful disciple's care. Woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. Un unconditional love calls us to die to self so that we can live for one another and live for God. As long as we work to model our lives upon the love of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we can trust that God is shaping our hearts into the holiness we desire and the unity we seek. It is in the family that we learn how to communicate and to express our love for God and for one another. It's in the family that we learn right from wrong and the importance of forgiveness and prayer. And so don't let your family become a courtroom. Let your family be like a confessional. May this Christmas season and this new year be a time of conforming ourselves to our family life that we embody the qualities of obedience, loyalty, love, and acceptance so that our Christian families can be a witness to the world of what it means to live a holy and loving family life. Following the example of our ancestors in faith, let us now profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worthy and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Sisters and brothers, we turn to our loving Father with humble and trusting hearts, placing our prayers before him. That all members of the church, through God's grace, may be faithful to the mission entrusted to us by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in authority may be guided by the Holy Spirit in seeking justice for their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from chronic illness may be relieved and healed through the gracious mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may grow in faith, hope, and love, transformed by grace to a life of gospel fidelity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may experience the perfect union with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered, for the names in the St. Monica book, and for the private intentions we hold in our hearts in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that in your love you hear and answer the prayers we bring to you today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 195 in the Source and Summit Missal. God rest ye merry gentlemen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Dennis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon can be found on page 119 in the Source and Summit Missal. his truth for the house of Israel. to the Lord of the earth, break forth into joyous song, and sing out your
please join in hymn number 118 in the Source and Summit Missal, Awain and Major. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that, after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This year, January 1st, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, is not a holy day of obligation since it falls on Saturday. For those who would like to celebrate this feast and bring in the new year with prayer, we will offer Mass on New Year's Eve at 6 o'clock p.m. at Holy Trinity Church, and then on New Year's Day at 10.30 a.m. at Emmanuel Church, and at 12 o'clock noon here at St. Joseph's. That is on New Year's Day. The Mass schedule then for the weekend is back to the normal schedule. 
Please pick up a bulletin today to learn more about other activities taking place within our downtown Dayton Catholic parishes. And for our ministers and volunteers, we have a little gift of appreciation in the sacristy. You're welcome to come back after mass, mass and to pick up an envelope. On the south side of our new building, we have a Holy Family Grotto. And it's a beautiful image of the Holy Family. Jesus is about probably 10 years old and Mary and Joseph are holding his hand. So I invite you after mass to take a look and to offer a prayer to the Holy Family that our families might become holy. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go forth glorifying God by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is found in the Source and Summit Missal, number 200. Good Christian men rejoice. <laughs> Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Hearts sent us before him now, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Great.